This is all Narragoo country, but what I call this is my heartland. Jacqueline Troy's ancestors have cared for the Snowy Mountains landscape for tens of thousands of years. I love the cold and I feel my lungs are clear up here, I can breathe. You can hear all the animals and the birds, it's a beautiful place to be, a silent, beautiful paradise. But this wilderness is also home to one of the nation's biggest engineering feats, the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Scheme. And now Snowy 2.0, the project's biggest expansion in half a century. I am a nation building Prime Minister, believe me, and this is a nation building project. It's essentially a giant battery that will shore up supply for a struggling power grid. These are big dreams in these mountains. Real courage, a belief in the future, a confidence in Australia. There was no feasibility study before he made the big announcement, which he estimated would cost $2 billion and be finished by 2021. The contract is now blown out to $5.1 billion, Completion, 2028 at the earliest. I think it's reasonable to estimate the total cost of Snowy on the current estimates at the 12 to $14 billion range. I don't think there's any doubt it's a white elephant. Its claim is it has long duration storage, but it's not obvious that there's a market demand for that, and certainly not now. In a statement, Malcolm Turnbull says Snowy 2.0 is good value for money and if it were online now, we wouldn't be facing the current energy crisis. Built at a cost of $800 million, it was the most ambitious undertaking in Australian history. Back when the original scheme was built, it was a wonder of engineering and a source of national pride. Seven power stations, 16 dams, generating power and supplying irrigators. But 50 years on, environmental concerns loom large. Personally, I wish there was no snowy hydro at all. For me, it's a, an environmental disaster. Huge new high voltage transmission lines to connect Snowy 2.0 to the grid will cut right through the middle of the national park. Environmentalist Di Thompson says they'll be seen from 14 kilometres away. She's a bit rocky, isn't it? There we are, we're nearly there. The power line is going to come from Lobs Hole and then it's going to swing in big arches across the river here, which is part of the, the, yeah. the upper reaches of the Tumut River. And then it's going to come exactly through where we are standing. So all of these recovering trees will be gone, splat. This is the worst case scenario that they've presented to us. Transmission company Transgrid says the other options for the power lines, building a tunnel, trenching or changing the route, are too expensive. So as we stand here now, if we come back in some years' time, we would just be looking at this vast 200 metre multi-laned easement and this huge power line. Once the power leaves the National Park, it still needs to connect to the grid. That involves huge new transmission lines next to the existing ones on Christine Hughes and Russell Irwin's properties at Bannister, north of Canberra. So you can't begin to imagine mm. how, how monstrous these big towers would be. Just unreal. As part of the Snowy 2 scheme, they need to upgrade the transmission lines. So they're going to be, hang on, two and a bit times as big as this, basically. Yeah. 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 It means a devaluation of up to 30 or maybe more than 30 percent because nobody wants to live close to these lines. 
They're pushing for the lines to be moved underground here too. So they set up a consultative community group, which is simply just a whitewash. I'm on it, and it's a whitewash. I guess the, the question of cost is, is somewhat in the eye of the beholder. If an overhead transmission line is, is delayed by five plus years because of community opposition, then the fact that a underground line is twice as expensive uh, may not be uh, as significant as, as you might think. And of course this is all because of Snowy 2.0, right? It is. Christine Hughes is Malcolm Turnbull's in-law but says that doesn't give her any special consideration. No, it hasn't made the slightest difference. Just up here is the road to Snowy 2.0, but the road's closed. We can't actually take you any further. Snowy Hydro declined to speak to 7.30 and refused access to the site. But we've managed to piece together the project's footprint from satellite images. Transmission has, has not really got the attention it's deserved, and that is actually quite an important part of, of the story moving forward. The ballooning cost of building this massive transmission network is adding even more to the mounting cost of the project. I think there was an imperative to claim a nation-building moniker for it, but not to disclose the genuine cost of it. The transmission, I think, is going to add at least another five to six billion. How the much more are you going to spend on transmission? Is there. No, no. Transmission because is... Because then they have to recover that from the consumers. That's, transmission that's is an investment, up. Scott. There's fierce debate about who should pay to plug Snowy 2.0 into the grid. The company, the federal government or the New South Wales government. What's certain is that cost will be passed on through the taxpayer purse or power bills. For traditional owner Jacqueline Troy, the damage to this fragile environment is too high a price to pay. They've completely devastated the valley. In this country, we believe in renewable energy and it looks like it's renewable energy, but at what cost? At the cost of this incredible alpine environment, that's the cost. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.